we have two types of telescope. Um, the, uh, we have a rigid telescope and we have a video um, nasoendoscope. The rigid telescope is actually inserted uh, through the mouth and I hold the tongue and it's got a little lens which is angled at 70 degrees uh, which just rests at the back of the throat and looks down onto the vocal cords. And the advantage of that is that it gives extremely high quality um, images. Um, uh, so we can look at the very fine detail of the vocal folds and how they're vibrating. Let me just do one order. Yeah. Hey, hey. Is that clear Wonderful. enough? Wonderful. Okay, good. The other one uh, is passed uh, through the nose. Um, and gives very good images, but not quite of the same uh, standard as the rigid ones. Um, but the advantage of that is that um, we're not limited to uh, uh, vowel sounds. Um, we can examine the singers when they're actually singing uh, musical phrases. Um, and we can, uh, so, uh, and it's not so restrictive for the, for, for the singer. And it's, in some cases, it's, it's better tolerated. These are little sensors, um, and this is uh, um, this picks up. Um, and basically, it passes a current, a uh, very, uh, very um, small current between the two uh, sensors here. And when the vocal folds come together, you get better passage of the current. And when the vocal folds part a little bit, uh, you get less current passing. So we, this gives us a very good idea of, you know. Um, how fast the, uh, the vocal folds are vibrating, and also how the vocal folds are coming together. Um, uh, and it produces um, we can, a little trace, which you can see here. So when the vocal folds come together, you see this sort of, um, uh, the, the trace moves upwards like this, and when the vocal folds part, it, uh, it goes down like this. And this is the part when the vocal folds are completely apart. Um, and you can see it's repeated from cycle to cycle. So this means the vocal folds come together like this, then they part, and then they come together at the bottom, and then close again, and this cycle is repeated. And um, so it gives very useful additional information about the behavior and, um, and the contact particularly, and how that changes between the two vocal folds. What we have on the screen is a picture of the, the vocal folds here, these white structures. Um, and these are the, called the false chords on either side. Um, to, just to orientate you, this is the, uh, the front where the tongue will be coming out of the mouth here. Um, this is the epiglottis. This is the back um, here where your swallowing passage starts. Um, that's the right side and that's the left side. And um, this is, these are the vocal folds here, the white structures. Then you've got the false chords on either side and you've got the ariepiglottic folds between these cartilages, which are called the arotenoids, and the uh, epiglottis here. And uh, we look at the vocal folds and how they vibrate, and we can see them vibrating because um, we're using the stroboscopic light. And I can just play that uh, a little bit um, for you. Uh, you can see how they, the vocal folds um, come together, and then they pass and come together again uh, here. And uh, so this is an example of a singer producing um, uh, overdrive. And uh, what we see particularly is that there's um, a degree of narrowing between the front and cartilage, uh, sorry, the cartilages at the back and the, um, the epiglottis here. And it looks a little sort of uh, obla oblong um, in, in structure. And we can also look at the uh, the blue trace, which is the speech um, or the sound. Sorry, it's the uh, the acoustics um, signal, and the green trace is the uh, laryngograph uh, waveform. Um, these are a series of um, stroboscopic images. Essentially, um, there's a flash of light, and the camera takes a, uh, a picture and then the vocal folds continue to vibrate and the camera gets set up again and then takes another uh, photograph um, just slightly delayed from the next one uh, from the previous one and that's repeated several times until uh, you capture a set of images throughout the 
vibratory cycle, and then you can play all those images one after the other, so it appears like the vocal folds are vibrating in slow motion. But it's an artifact, but it's a very efficient way of looking at how the vocal folds are, are vibrating. So we can see uh, in the first image here that the vocal folds are together, and um, as they progress through here, you can see this one, in this one here, the vocal folds are just beginning to part a little bit, parting a little bit more here, a bit more, and then they're fully open here, and they start to, starting to close here. And you can see that um, if you run these um, images, uh, one after the other, um, then you can see the vocal folds vibrating. And if we make it a little bit bigger, um, you can see um, those eight images are played one after the other and uh, demonstrate the uh, vibratory cycle. Mm. These are the basic images we use whenever we examine the vocal folds and we want to see how they're vibrating uh, and whether there's anything in, uh, on the vocal folds that's in, impairing that, certainly in a clinical situation where someone comes with a vo voice problem. But uh, in this research context, um, we're looking at how the vocal fold vibration changes with the different modes and looking at the, uh, um, the influence of the effects on the vibration of the vocal folds as well. So for instance, um, we're looking at vibrato uh, and seeing is it actually, um, are there changes at the vocal fold level or, um, or are the changes more um, at the um, what we call the supraglottic structures, so that's the bit above the vocal folds here. And what we've shown is that there are different types of vibrato. Uh, there's a hammer vibrato where there seems to be a fast movement of the cartilages at the back. And then there's a laryngeal vibrato um, where the whole larynx moves up and down. And there are other types as well uh, where different parts of the, the vocal tract um, take part in, in the vibration. We do have some of the equipment um, uh, which we need, of course, to uh, back in uh, the um, Nottingham University Hospital so we can see patients. Um, but uh, the equipment uh, is improving all the time and what we have here um, is state-of-the-art equipment. We've been extremely lucky uh, that uh, two companies, um, Olympus, have uh, provided all the video uh, equipment, which is, um, as I said, state of the art. And also for Laryngograph, um, based in um, the UK, um, they produce the, uh, not only um, the equipment um, uh, that measures the vocal fold vibration or the contact, as I described, um, but also a, a new light source and all the equipment that links the Olympus equipment to uh, the computer. And uh, it basically can match the two together, so giving us even more detailed information about the, uh, how the vocal folds are behaving. <coughs> Software is produced by a Laryngograph. It's called the Laryngostrobe. And uh, to me, um, you know, this gives you the best... Uh, information not only about how the vocal folds are vibrating but it also the signal allows the stroboscope uh, to be triggered uh, giving much more precise um, uh, flashing uh, of, of, the, of the light source.